retro video game collecting. Some people call it a hobby, a passion, an obsession. For me, the why is much more powerful. Why we amass, why we gather, why we build. So let's set the record straight. Why do I collect? To bring back the past, to remember, to give tribute to the greatest art form ever created and to preserve it for future gamers to come. This is why I collect. Games. To all the collectors, gamers, retro enthusiasts, first timers, let's open this time capsule. Relive those better days. Let us escape into a world that will not be forgotten, that cannot be erased. Join the campaign. Be part of the mission. Suit up. Strap in. It's time to power on. We are going on a journey like never before. Are you ready? Then press start. Good, my pack rats. Pac-Man Case here. Welcome to an unedited, unfiltered, raw game room tour. Tis this way. Walk this way. Or dance. I feel like Blippi. I immediately regret that. Guys, welcome to the Andycade. That's short for Arcade and Andy, which is my name. Here you are. And that was this year's game room tour. Thanks guys for watching. I'll talk to you later. Huh? I'm just kidding, dumb. And over here, uh, right behind me, you guys can see the game wall. The game wall consists of PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, Nintendo 64, and some handheld stuff. And I will walk you guys through the rest of the game uh, room as well. I have had lots of things change over uh, this last year and some things stay the same. So you'll recognize some stuff from last year's game room tour, but you will also see things that I added this last year. So we will start over here at the PlayStation wall. Start up top, uh, the PlayStation Classic, which nobody loved. Once you mod it, it's actually not that bad. Um, so I do have that. Also getting a wireless controller so you can play with like a PlayStation 4 controller, primo. Um, next is my PlayStation 2 uh, box console, the one I got when I was a kid. Unfortunately, this year, my PlayStation Pro God of War Special Edition freaking died on me. Um, so I have it up here now as display. It's just a video problem, which I need to fix. And then the uh, uh, PlayStation Launch console. Below that is my PlayStation 1 collection. I haven't done much expansion on the PlayStation 1. I have most of the games that I'm really looking for at this time. Some of my favorites that are in here, um, I would say Bust a Groove. Oh my goodness, I don't know why, but for some reason, the dancing and rhythm games were fun, but this one you'd have to dance yourself. This one you actually just made sure that you were like coinciding the, the button presses with each character and you fight each other like a dance battle. They made a Bust a Groove 1 and Bust a Groove 2. Awesome game. Um, Prappa the Rappa, I'm still looking for a freaking um, manual for that one, but that is also a fun game. I'm not very good at it, but those are a couple dance rhythm games. Below that is my PlayStation 2 collection. Uh, I think this was the same as last year. I just had three slots slated to it. Uh, huge fan of the PlayStation because of the light gun games that it had with it, which I actually pulled all of them out. They are, or maybe I didn't pull all of them out, most of them. 
stuff like Time Crisis, um, which was also on the original PlayStation, PlayStation 2. Um, love those light gun games with the gun con. Um, Ratchet and Clank, the Jack series, God of War. That's where I got started being such a God of War fan. Um, but this collection pretty much is, is staying the same. Any type of like extra stuff that I have for the console, I have in a separate room. But these are kind of just the gyms that I love to play on the console. The PlayStation 2 was my baby. Um, next below that is my PS3. So I believe previously I had three slots for my PlayStation 3. I have then since condensed it down to two. Uh, I did this weird alpha thing where I took these PlayStation games on this row are all uh, console uh, exclusives. So what you can only get on the PlayStation 3 is the first row. Second row are the games that play the best on the PS3 versus the 360. I tried to research it like I knew what I was talking about and then realized real quick that I don't know uh, the jargon when it comes to that stuff. Uh, but I, I have noticed that some of these games play a little bit better. But man, PlayStation, again, God of War, uh, Uncharted. Um, what else? The Ratchet and Clank games went crazy on the PlayStation 3. But I have a... Uh, sneaking suspicion that this is going to be like the Wii U. I think the PS3 will turn in to a console people want to collect for because you cannot emulate very well on the console, which then in turn, for normal consumers, this will be the only way that you can play PlayStation games is on a normal PS3, regular PS3. And so people are want to have some nostalgia for that. So I think this is cool to collect for right now on the PlayStation 3, even if you were never into it, which I'm one of those people. I never got into the PlayStation 3, unfortunately. So below that, uh, the reason I brought up my PlayStation 3 to two shelves is because my PS4 section absolutely exploded. I fell in love with the PS4, this last console uh, generation. The Xbox did not get much love for me. I got most of my love from the PlayStation 4. Um, there was some really awesome games that came out of this one too. I'm going to say God of War on every single PlayStation. The Uncharted stuff was awesome too. Uh, came out with a new Crash, which I still haven't played. I need to play the new Crash. It's about time. Um, the Mortal Kombat games that came out were really good too. Um, what else? Oh, and then PlayStation VR. Oh man, I am such a big VR fan. Once I got that, this is like one of the... Uh, most inexpensive ways to play VR. It's only 720 and it has kind of a screen door effect, but to be honest, you wear it for just a little bit. You don't notice it. Such, such an awesome uh, addition to the console, the VR. So anyway, I've been collecting VR when I can. Over here in the, what I would call the middle of the game wall is the Nintendo section. Not all my Nintendo games, uh, but pretty much the end of the last three generations. So up above, boxed Wii, uh, black, boxed Wii white, and then I have all the console variants. Um, I get most of my stuff, I, I kid you not guys, I, in this room, 90% of the things that you're gonna see, I found at a thrift store. So if it's not uh, gently used, I normally don't pick it up for full retail. So everything you see, I found it at a thrift store at one point or another to piece the collection together, which is just really cool to be able to know I didn't break the bank uh, getting into this. So I'm not rich by any means. <laughs> There's no way you can build a collection like this if you're paying full retail price without completely killing your wallet. Um, so uh, up above that is some um, like special edition Zelda controller, Mario Kart steering wheel. We all know we loved playing with the wheel when it first came out on the Wii. Uh, my Luigi uh, RC car, which I'll show you a little bit later. That's such a cool car. And then a couple Pixel Pals up above here. Below that is my Switch collection. I totally fell in love with the Switch. I think it is such a cool idea to be able to dock your console, pull it back out, use it, if I ever go on vacation, you damn well know I am taking my Switch with me. Um, some of the games that came out for this system were pretty cool. If you guys have not played Astral Chain, that is one that I think is completely worth it. Axiom Verge also came out um, on multiple consoles, but I prefer to play it on the Switch handheld. Um, this kind of a Metrovania style game. Um, Mega Man 11 came out. Um, this last console run. And then... There's another one in here that I can't stop playing. Oh, for some reason I can't stop playing Rhyme. It's very much like a Zelda clone, um, but you can like 
change time and shadows uh, as like a puzzler adventure game. So very cool, very cool. Um, by the way, don't taste these cartridges. They taste yucky on purpose so the kids don't die when they eat them. Just want, just figure that out. What is this? I got a hidden switch game here. Mario Maker 2 is just chilling here. Why is that? Babe, did you do that? By the way, Babe is my wife. She's behind uh, filming right now. You can say hi, Miss Pac-Man, or Ashley. You can you can know her name. She's not a secret. Um, next is my Wii collection. Uh, I have built the Wii uh, collection mainly because I didn't give it as much love as it totally deserved. Right when it first came out, this was the very first console that me and my wife bought together. So we have some uh, sentimental value because of that. But I know that I might have had been one of those people, I had like maybe 10 or like 12 games when the console first came out. And then when I went back in the library, I realized how many cool games actually came out for the Wii. It was not just a kid console, not just a family console. There were some awesome ones. So a uh, huge fighting game fan, Tatsunoku versus Capcom was one of the special ones that came out for Wii exclusive only. Um, I, they have to bring the series back. This is Punch-Out. This was the last time they really brought Punch-Out back was on the Wii. We need it again. Nintenders, we need it again. And then House of the Dead, man. The last time that on-rail shooters and light gun stuff really mattered was on the Wii. Since then, it's kind of been forgot about or kind of thrust into the VR world. I just want to sit on my couch and shoot a gun at the TV. That's all I want. Is that too much to ask? I don't think so. <laughs> so that's the Wii collection. Um, below that, I just talked about the PS3 turning into the Wii U, which I think the Wii U is going to turn into what the Sega Saturn was. And in general, not a lot of people cared about the console, didn't know it was a new console. Um, so I have taken an opportunity to start to collect for the Wii U, miss out on any ones that I might not have played, but also... Nintendo realized the screw up that they did on here. So when they created the Switch, they ported most of the big name titles over. By doing that, a lot of people still miss the Wii U because they were like, oh, I'll just play it on Switch. Little did they know there is so many cool features that you get on the actual Wii U games that you don't get on the Switch titles. So an example would be like uh, Need for Speed. Um, Need for Speed Most Wanted. So this one, you actually use the secondary gamepad to play with like a co-driver and they're able to uh, help you outrun the cops by like setting things up, looking at your map. So you get kind of a, a, an additional second player and they get to play kind of their own unique game. Those are things that you can't really do. So below that is the Xbox 360. This was my baby. In 2005, when this guy came out, launch, uh, I picked up what? It was like Rockstar Tennis and something else. And I thought this was such a cool console. The 360 was fantastic, aside from the Red Ring of Death. Some of my favorites still to this day, the Left 4 Dead series. I can't go wrong with that one. I absolutely love the Left 4 Dead series. They made Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. And just so you know, they got a fresh one coming called, what was it, babe? Back for Blood. So excited for that one. Um, this was my preferred console to play all the Call of Duties with my friends. Um, NBA Jam was great. Alan Wake was such a fantastic 360 game too. Um, if you want to carry around a flashlight and be scared of shadows, that's the one that you want to play. And of course, this is where I played all of my fighting games too. So I've got my Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter X Tekken, which everybody forgot about, but they're supposed to be making a Tekken X Street Fighter game, which I don't think will ever come out. And then unfortunately, I want to skip right through this. So I'm sorry if you're an Xbox fan, but the Xbox One, is my least played console. I probably have played this thing a total of 20 times, bought games because I thought I would play them, realized real quick, this console is not for me. They, Microsoft just did not support the Xbox One very well. I hope that the Xbox Series X is going to be better. But for right now, um, you know, Halo gears for exclusives. Other than that, I don't really pop it in. And I actually love the Xbox controller. I played a lot of Forza. Um, what's another one that I played, babe? You remember? That was pretty much it. Pretty much Forza. Like, that's how bad um, I didn't use that console. So I do regret it. Heading over to the retro stuff, guys, on the game wall. Up above, I've got uh, my white switch and my red switch. The red switch is the V2. In my hands is like a custom-made Super Mario 64. I don't have a 64 box, but one day... 
Up above that is my Superboy. Uh, what a great way to be able to play handheld games on the Super Nintendo or for the Super Nintendo. This is my one of my first actual uh, complete in box consoles. I got it on a garage sale. There was a lady, she called herself the Nintendo lady. <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant. And then she came out with this guy and she's got a bunch of games. I'm not gonna let him go. And I was like, okay, what about the console? She's like, well, I've got a couple of them. So she comes out with this complete in box, still has the Sears tag on it. So cool. Got it for a good deal. Picked up the NES Classic Edition and the Super Nintendo. I actually stood in line for the Super Nintendo because I liked the NES Classic so much. Uh, this one I just found at GameStop. Just sit on the back counter during the madness when people were trying to collect them. Picked my wife up a Switch Lite. She loves it. She calls it her Tetris 99 machine because she plays it only exclusively for that. And I have to tell you, secret time, if you're going to play Tetris 99, do it on the Switch Lite because it comes with the sweetest D-pad ever. And personal preference, I think you got to play Tetris 99 with a D-pad. Uh, right next to that is my complete in box Nintendo GameCube. Also got this at a garage sale. Sweet little old lady. I said, hey, do you got any video games? She said, I think I have something in my kitchen. And I don't know if it was like a estate sale but when i walked in this was sitting on here it came with the four classic bonus uh games inside which had legend of zelda uh adventures of link ocarina of time majora's mask and a wind waker demo so this is a cool cool collector's piece below that is my nes collection now first i have to say i don't collect anything that is a cardboard box. If you see it in the collection, it's because I've stumbled across it, ended up finding it for super cheap, but I don't actually go after them. The reason is, is that stuff has to be taken care of so well, and it's something I just don't wanna deal with. So everything that I collect is loose, unless it already comes in a case. The NES uh, collection is super special. This is the first collection that I had um, that I actually played games with my dad, and this was his collection. So. He had like 50 or 60 games for it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then I've just kind of filled everything in since then. I've been going for this black label on the NES for um, those ones actually you don't find out in the wild very often. In fact, you don't find most cartridge based stuff out in the wild anymore. Most of that stuff either goes to collectors or online. So um, but I've lucked out to be able to find a lot of this stuff. Uh, next on here, I've got like some of my most prized possessions in these original Nintendo rental boxes. I have such nostalgia for these. These are so cool. Uh, Super Mario 3, uh, Kirby's Adventure, Legend of Zelda, Metroid, and Donkey Kong. Um, I don't know why. I have something with Donkey Kong. I love playing Donkey Kong. Um, underneath that is my uh, Super Nintendo collection. I was never a Super Nintendo kid. I wanted to be but I actually didn't get my Super Nintendo until I got my Nintendo 64 at the exact same time. So I ended up playing 64 games and Super Nintendo games at the exact same time and missed a lot. So I have been able to dive back in the library, but the collection is rather uh, limited just because I'm still finding things for the Super Nintendo I like. The things that I've faced out have been ones that uh, I think are standout games. So we've got EVO, kind of a cool role-playing game where you upgrade yourself as a fish all the way through. Uh, Street Fighter Alpha 2, this is the game I rented 100,000 times at the rental store till my mom was finally like, just get the game. We're gonna stop renting it. Zombies at my neighbors, an awesome one. SWAT Cats I just picked up this year. Turtles in Time, what a great arcade port. Castlevania 4 and uh, Battletoads Double Dragon because you can't go wrong with some Battletoads and Double Dragon. Uh, underneath that is a prized possession. Um, I was reached out to by Video Game Dust Sleeves um, and they made me a custom dust sleeve for my gaming channel, which is awesome. Um, but in it has my favorite NES game of all time, and that is Jackal. I love Jackal. If you guys haven't played Jackal, use a missing out. It's good. I don't know why it just sounded like Jar Jar Binks there, but use a missing out. Uh, uh, next underneath that, these are the only um, complete in box games that I have for the Nintendo 64. Again, I just found these thrifting, but I will not collect for them. Um, aside from that, this next section is my Nintendo 64 collection. And this is the only collection I'm going for a complete set. Now I'm gonna preface that it is a complete 
North American set, which was 296 titles. I am currently 27 titles away from that complete collection. My goal was to get it done in 2020. I wasn't able to, so I'm really hoping that 2021 will be the year that I can complete this full set. Faced out some of my most favorite Nintendo 64 titles, No Mercy, personal opinion, but the best wrestling game ever created. Uh, Mario 64, can't go wrong with that one. Super Smash Brothers, I ran the gamut at college. There was a 64 in my lunchroom um, when we all took a break and I went down on that one and I probably killed thousands of people in matches as Ness. Sorry if you're not a Ness guy, that's my dude. Star Fox, we're talking Rumble Pack, man. You want a controller that rumbles, Star Fox 64 brought it to us. Mario 64 and Diddy Kong Racing, this is the first time that I was able to play with my cousins and have a blast with four control. Everything just fell behind me for whatever reason. Uh, we had a great time playing this because it had four ports. So this is what I have the most nostalgia for uh, when I was a young whippersnapper. So um, underneath that is uh, my GameCube collection. Um, this is another set that I'm actually going for an exclusive set. So anything that was made for the GameCube exclusively, I am looking to collect. And it's going to be the top row, anything underneath of it, just some of my favorite GameCube games. And then on the very bottom here is the player's choice. I'm not collecting for the player's choice, but some of the exclusives, obviously, I've only been able to find on the player's uh, choice thrifting. Some standouts on the GameCube, I would say Billy Hatcher. You just roll an egg around and you wouldn't think it's that fun, but it's fun. It's a good time. Um, what else is in here? We've got uh, F-Zero GX was a great one. Uh, Metroid Prime. I think a lot of people didn't realize how good this was going to be as a first person Metroid game. And it was so good. Um, obviously, you can't go wrong with the Mario Karts, Mario Parties. Um, yeah, you love that console. Uh, I am not a huge handheld uh, collector, but if I find games that I love on the console, I'll pick them up. A small Nintendo DS collection. Some standouts here, man. The Professor Layton games are a blast. Uh, Wario Land and, or excuse me, Wario, uh, Master of Disguise and Beautiful Joe were great games. Some ported uh, Nintendo 64 games were cool too. Over here is my 3DS titles, Chibi Robo, uh, Kirby Triple Deluxe, uh, Metroid Samus Returns. Oh, such a good game. I didn't realize how much I would like it, and I really enjoy the Metroid games. And then uh, Super Street Fighter 4, which was like the first time you could play in 3D on the 3DS for a Street Fighter game. That's why I have it. Super cool. Over here to my left, this weird thing. I guess up above it, I've got a little X-Men Little throwback to my childhood, huge X-Men fan growing up. Below that, this is my to be filed or to be categorized games. So that would be everything that I've picked up at a thrift store recently that I haven't actually moved in to my uh, collection. So this stuff is still not logged uh, yet. So that's just sitting there waiting for that for right now. Uh, below that, another Iron Man poster, and then my Beast Wars figures, which my daughter loves. These are actually highly collected after, and I feel like I'm one of the few people that love Beast Wars over Transformers. I mean, I love Transformers, but Beast Wars was my jam. My daughter loves playing with those. I need to kind of keep them back up. As we rotate around here, um, I changed this side of the game wall. This is, I had three TVs last year, but due to COVID and nobody being able to hang out with each other, we ended up uh, moving some stuff around so that I could make space for my arcade cabinet on the left side and a showcase on the right side. So we'll come back over and talk about the showcase here. Um, up above, I picked up the Virtual Boy this last year. This was such a cool pickup. Got it as a fantastic deal. I have Wario Land and Mario Tennis as the two games. And I've been told those are the best games to have. So I pretty much have a complete collection of the Virtual Boy. Up above that, King Kong, found him in a garage sale, uh, scared the crap out of my daughter, but at the same time she loved him. So I had to pick him up. Um, I've had that guy for a while too. I even have video of me chasing her around with him, which is really funny. Up above that, uh, I had this uh, donated to the channel. This is a PlayStation 2 Resident Evil 4 chainsaw controller. 
What a crazy ass controller. I can't believe that this was actually produced. Um, this controller like actually revs up. Um, so you can like pull it to start uh, and it has all the joysticks and functions to it. Oh, so cool, so cool. Thank you Topher for donating that to the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, a little Resident Evil 5 snow globe. Um, I, it's actually a sand globe. Look how, how cute is that? <laughs> My daughter loves to play with it. Uh, Streets of Rage 4 came out on the Switch this last year. Oh, man. I picked up the limited run edition. It came with a soundtrack and a trading card. And then this guy fell. Uh, this is the Japanese GameCube. So if you guys haven't seen Japanese GameCube, this is your first time seeing a collection. Um, the Japanese GameCube games were different. They had them in these cardboard sleeve holders and then like these cool plastic boxes. As you open it up, it would have your game, a uh, spot for your memory card, and then some extra things inside of it. I think these are so cool. These are such better GameCube cases than what we got. I mean, I got nothing against the DVD cases, but now they've been producing DVD cases like this for like the last couple generations. So um, underneath this guy is uh, a new addition to the game room. This is my top loader NES. Picked this one up this last year as my favorite Super Mario game in it, Super Mario 2. Uh, I made a little Star Wars shrine. Not only do I think The Mandalorian's fantastic, um, I'm just catching up on it, finished the first season. We got Boba Fett back there, um, uh, Pod Racer, my favorite Star Wars PlayStation game, which is Jedi Power Battles. If you guys haven't played that game, it is awesome. It is fantastic. VHS uh, collection of the original Star Wars trilogy. Underneath this, which is a reason why I made space in the first place on the game room, was so that I could add these strategy guides. I think this is the coolest time capsule ever created. Uh, you know, back before the internets, this was how we got through our games. This is how we ended up getting uh, ourselves like hints and codes and secret areas that all came from these strategy guides. And to be able to come over here, open up something like Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. It's got um, all of your hints, your codes. And if it's a game that you stopped playing halfway through and you want a refresher, another awesome reason to have strategy guides. You can just go back through, read a little bit, and you're back in the swing of things. So love collecting for strategy guides right now. I find them all over the place. I feel like a lot of people are not collecting for that stuff right now, um, but I am. So uh, below this is where I have all of my controllers for my for the four uh, big brands. Um, we've got Sega stuff. Oh, hey, look, a little Star Wars game fell back there. Sega Saturn, uh, Sega Dreamcast and Genesis stuff is in this bin. Uh, and this one is all of my Nintendo uh, 64, some extra Super Nintendo controllers and my GameCube stuff. And a racing wheel was in there for the Wii. Down below is all my PlayStation stuff. I even came across a uh, Major League Gaming controller while I was out thrifting. Um, so some cool stuff in there. The, uh, oh, I forgot what they called these on the VR. I don't remember. What were they? Oh, navigation controllers. I mean, literally these were like, it was Wii. They were competing with Re with the Wii. And then my Xbox uh, extra controllers. There's 360 controllers, original Xbox controllers in there. Uh, man, I, I collect a lot of 360 controllers. You can find them cheap and they made so many variants of them. So next is, this is an addition to the game room. I did... Uh, this is an Ikea. I forget what they're called. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but these shelves allow you to put a glass uh, separator anywhere you want to. So it let me half them and then kind of make little bays for some of my favorite gaming memories. So this first one, I am all into comic books, brah. So this is uh, The Thing. He's my favorite Fantastic Four character, one of my favorite characters. One of my favorite villains is Sabretooth, and I'm looking to get a bust of Sabretooth soon to add to the game room. Some more like X-Men metal trading cards, some X-Men VHSs back there, a Captain America VHS, man. Comics all day long. My favorite fighting game series, if you guys have not checked it out, go check out my uh, Street Fighter collection. This is the Pixel Pal, all of my pop figures, and of course I've got all of the games for Street Fighter. 
a couple Street Fighter animated series TV shows there, and some nice little figures that I was given to by Zach over at Iowa Retro Gamer Dad. So thanks, dude. Next over here is my Halo Reach uh, statues. These are cool, man. Uh, Halo Reach was my favorite Halo game. I loved playing as the different Spartans. Next to that is a Mega Man statue, which actually links up to the Chun-Li statue in the Street Fighter section. It was for Marvel Infinite, if I'm not mistaken. Right next to that, PlayStation, my favorite character of all time, Kratos. Kratos pop figure back there, the Pixel Pals. And then below here, I just found this guy at a thrift store. This is the Kratos and his son, who I'm not gonna spoil the name. Uh, this statue was killer. He's literally cutting off one of the uh, heads and I just thought it was, I thought it was awesome. Uh, I, funny enough, we were out with my daughter. I think, was this Target? I think it was Target. And they had like these mystery toys. No, I think it was Hot Topic. They had these mystery toys. And I was like, man, if I wanted one of those, all I would want is Crash and like the Tiki Head. And my daughter picked out the two and that's what they ended up being. So these are like super special for me. I uh, got the Game & Watch, picked that guy up. My Pac-Man machines, like old arcade machines, phone, phone, wow, phone holder. And then also over here is my arcades uh, that are like desktop arcades. And then like a little uh, one up that my friend Amanda made. Thanks, Amanda. Over here to my left, some more nostalgia stuff for me. Um, Power Rangers, the movie, love Power Rangers. I'm a big Power Rangers fan, I tell you. Uh, the Black Rangers back there, Back to the Future, which I won from Retro Rick. Guys, if you don't know Retro Rick, you're living under a rock. Yeah, you wanna talk about retro stuff, that is the man. Um, Batmobile and Batman from Tim Burton's Batman. That is my favorite Batman, um, as well as vehicles. So the Batmobile from Tim Burton's 1989 Batman, oh, fantastic. Up above that, I talked to you guys a little bit earlier about being a huge Beast Wars fan. This is Optimus Primal um, and then the Transmetal Optimus back there. Both of those from my childhood, I uh, love those. Um, back there is Optimus from the movie. And then I found this guy recently at a thrift store. This is Bumblebee, complete all the parts. Such, such cool. I love these models that they created for this stuff. And then underneath that, a little Rocket Raccoon and then Mighty Max, man. I've got two Mighty Max. Uh, I can't find the other one, but I've got two Mighty Max play sets. This is like the Polly Pocket for ladies. This is, Mighty Max was for boys and I hope they bring it back. But anytime I can stumble across, across this stuff, worth it. Mighty Max was awesome. Up above that is my Ninja Turtles. These are the cartoon NECA figures. Donnie, uh, Leo, Mikey, and Raph. Next to that, a couple figures that I have either found or had when I was a kid. I had this weird figure. It was like Power Gym Ninja Turtles and they have like armor that goes on them and their heads flip to like more brooding turtles. Um, but Raph is my favorite by far. I love Raph. Um, that's not gonna stay. That's gonna fall all over. Please, Donnie. Uh, and a Raph pop figure back there. As we come below here, this is the first and probably only one-up arcade I'm ever going to own, and that's the Ninja Turtles four-player arcade cabinet. I know a lot of people have these who are collectors, but this is just such a cool, um, con I, I almost said console, cool arcade stand-up. The kids can come in here, thrash on it. It's not going to be like an, uh, you know, a $1,000 $2,000 arcade machine they can break. You know, these things are 300 bucks. And I know that's a lot of money, but at least they can really put at it. Her cousin and herself came in here and they just played for hours. Loved it. Awesome. I love it. Found a couple stools while I was at the um, the Value Village. I think those were Value Village. No, Goodwill. Bar stools, I think the best way to play. Some people put them on the ground. That's not me. Hike it up, man. I'm too tall for that stuff. Uh, back here in the corner, um, I used to have three TVs on the back wall due to COVID and not being able to have people over. I pulled those TVs off to make room for this stuff, but I still have got some of the brackets just in case I want to put them back there. Ended up finding a, an NES cap recently. And what's gross is you pick this stuff at a thrift store, so you never want to wear it, but I thought it was a cool piece. Some Guitar Hero guitars back there. And then next to the Turtles cabinet, one of my favorite places in the game room. This is my Sega wall. 
the Sega wall is important to me because that's what I had as a kid. Yes, I started with the NES with my dad, but the first console that was truly mine was the Sega Genesis. So being able to dive into Sega's library of the four consoles that they had, really a treat. I love it. Um, up above, I've got the PlayStation Mini console. The, such a great console. They've made a lot of crappy clones out of this stuff, but this one made by Sega was the best. Uh, a couple complete inbox Game Gear games. Huge shout out to Steve Craig Retro Games. He hooked me up this year with these two Game Gear games and a Game Gear. So I have a series called the Game Gear Grind that I do. If you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out. I have like three episodes I've done so far. But I made a goal this last year to collect from my childhood all the Game Gear games that I had. Um, I used to take that Game Gear everywhere. I didn't have a Game Boy. That Game Gear was everything to me. Plugged it into the wall. Uh, we went to a cabin that my family uh, owned back in the day. I used to go up to the loft, plug it in, and that's where I would stay playing Sonic Drift, Mortal Kombat, X-Men. So much cool memories from that stuff. But I picked up a Game Gear because I didn't have one anymore, and it was broken. So Steve hooked me up with a fresh uh, and crisp Game Gear. Thank you again, buddy. This is awesome. And I've added a lot of Game Gear games to the collection so far. Some standouts would be like Terminator. Um, and I, to, to this day, I still love Columns. I think Columns is a great game. Uh, behind that is my loose Sega Genesis. Again, um, I don't want to collect for the paper boxes, but the Sega Genesis stuff created these clamshells. So anytime I can find a clamshell that I can pair with these loose ones, that's where that's gonna go. All of the clamshell games that I have right now are on the red labels and the black labels. Some of this stuff I had as a kid, um, but some standouts, man, Castlevania Bloodlines. This is such a fun game. Um, Mortal Kombat 2, Maximum Carnage and Separation Anxiety, both great Spider-Man games. Um, also, this is my personal opinion, but Captain America and the Avengers on the Genesis is the best version of this game. Cool arcade port, great sound, great controls on the Genesis. Um, oh, hiding behind the Game Gear games for some reason is my Master System collection. So I was not uh, into the Master System. In fact, I just jumped on it this last year. But uh, some of the ones that I picked up was Afterburner, Wonder Boy, Alien Syndrome, Hang On and Safari Hunt, Space Harrier, and Ghostbusters. Uh, and it's awesome. I think I also have Time. Oh, crap. I forget what it's called. It's uh, a couple loose ones. Time Soldiers, which my buddy Jeff, who is a huge Sega fan, uh, that was stuff that he played as a kid. And the reason I bring Jeff up is I was lucky enough to have the Dreamcast collection, most of his childhood games, which was something like 20 games, donated to me. I will keep them in uh, immaculate condition, but some of the ones that he gave me, man, it snagged me, Soul Calibur, we played that nonstop when we were younger. Um, Space Channel 5, some standouts on the Dreamcast. Um, also Power Stone, can't go wrong. I don't have Power Stone 2 yet in the collection, but Power Stone, what a great game. And then on the bottom here is the forgotten console from Sega, and that is the Sega Saturn. Now there is a huge market there for the Sega Saturn, but it's because they're so rare. So they came in these long box um, shells, and the reason they put them in these god-awful things is because they had too many from their Sega CD production run that ended up uh, having overflow. So they just decided to put the Sega Saturn stuff in there. For Sega CD, I ended up finding all of these games at a thrift store. It's like Lethal Enforcers, Mad Dog. What else was in there? Battle Corp, uh, Skeleton Warriors. So this was all very, very cool to pick up, but I didn't have a Sega CD, so I had to fix that. So I did snag myself a Sega CD down here. They come with either a Model 1 or Model 2 Genesis attachment to them, and then the Sega Master System, which I picked up from Dan. Go over and check out Digi Desden Games, guys. Great dude, he streams on Twitch all the time, but he hooked me up with a Master System so I could play those games. Uh, over here, right uh, above that stuff, is my Sega Saturn Japanese collection. Now, if you want fighting game ports, that is the best way to go. The ports of the fighting games on the Sega Saturn, not only are they cheaper than the American versions, but they look 
great. And they have a lot of extra content in them too. Below that is my two Street Fighter arcade sticks, one Street Fighter 4, one Super Street Fighter. Uh, my Dreamcast Striker from Retro Fighters. This is a game changer for me. I'm not a fan of the Dreamcast controller, but when I play with this, absolutely love it. The Turbo Graphics Mini. I never had an original Turbo Graphics 16, but when I was able to get the Mini that it uh, had all of the games that I wanted to play on it, all the shooters, what a great, great uh, system for shooters. And then over to the right is the PlayStation VR headset. And I already talked about that earlier. The PlayStation VR is fantastic. I think it's great. It sits on your head without like squishing into your eyes, which is one of my favorite parts of the design. Very cool. Um, underneath this stuff is all of my DVD collection, box sets, um, and then some of my gaming magazines are tucked underneath away there. Um, this is some like giveaway stuff that I have set up here as well. Um, over here is my main desk. This is the command center. Uh, I'm not a PC gamer. As much as I'd love to be, consoles is where it's at for me. I'm just more comfortable on consoles. I love to collect for consoles. Something about the pop culture of it, uh, where it came from, my childhood, that's always where I will be. But the computer has been great for arcade and main games. So just this last year, I picked up this X-Arcade, uh, the tank. This thing is awesome. Uh, Two-player all the button maps that you can do. It even comes with a trackball, so you can play Golden Tee if you want to. I currently have Rampage playing on this, but uh, if I do streams, which I stream every Friday at 8.30, if you guys wanna come join and hang out, I'll play some arcade games on here, play some emulation games on here, have a good time. Uh, I'm still using Edifier speakers, which I think are great studio monitor speakers that I do to edit all of my videos. Um, next to this, flanking it is two blue Ikea, uh, they're office shelves, office drawers, something like that. I forget what they're called too. If I find, I'll put it in the description, but I've used this for overflow. My game room isn't that big, so I needed an opportunity to be able to add some stuff to it. And this made it really simple. So first drawer has all of my memory cards, my VMUs for the Dreamcast. This is the eight gig stuff for the PlayStation 2. The original memory cards for the PS1 is in here. And then charging cables for all the various wireless cords with internal batteries. Um, this also has um, charging cables for some of the handhelds that I have, as well as like a wireless receiver for a 360 controller, some iPhone chargers. Uh, next is uh, anytime that I make uh, boxes. So if for some reason I need like a DVD box, uh, game box made, um, I'll create those or if I'm shipping stuff out. So I don't flip a whole lot, but when I do, I just needed something real quick to be able to ship things out for people. Uh, and then this is all of my classic controllers. So that would mean any system that came out recently that was like a mini or a classic system. I stored all the controllers here because I didn't know where to put them aside from the other original controllers and it seemed like a good spot. The last drawer is my work stuff, which is super boring. Um, this is what I shoot with, by the way. This is my uh, Canon 80D. I love this camera. I've had it for a couple years now. Um, use a 17 to 85 lens to go back and forth. Fantastic road mic. I know Rift knows what I'm talking about at Pixel Game Squad. This is his mic of choice, and it is a great directional mic. I love the road mics. Walk this way so I can show you a chair. Um, I didn't have a gaming chair before and I got tired of it. So I ended up picking up this FitMax gaming chair. Um, great, I use it for streaming, supports a big gentleman like myself. Um, and I've had a good time in that gaming chair. It even comes with a massager. Ooh, That's what most people said when they heard me say that. So I've gotten a lot of flack uh, because all I have is my LCDs in this room and I wanted an opportunity to play some of the light gun games that I'm a huge fan of on the PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Xbox. So I brought one of my CRT TVs into the game room. This is the Magnavox. Uh, I think it was produced in like 94, 95. It's not a great looking TV um, on the outside, but the screen is fantastic and it does a great job for the light gun games. I currently have it playing one of my favorite fighters on the PS1 and that is Darkstalkers 3. Um, loved it, very, very cool. Um, I have a Toshiba TV upstairs in the playroom where I have my original retro consoles hooked up to. I think I've got a Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, 
and a PlayStation up there. Um, so if my kid's playing in the playroom, I can play the retro games on the 32 inch uh, Toshiba. Uh, over here on the left side of the desk uh, is the other office drawer. Um, and in here, I've added some controllers and some what I think is crucial items to have in a game room. Uh, top is some additional uh, handheld Game Boy stuff, some more SPs, uh, my camera equipment, that's my Nifty 50 lens, and like, what is that, a Sega, Sega Game Gear, um, me, uh, magnifying glass. Uh, you gotta have a battery drawer. If you wanna play uh, retro games, like, it's so sad to call 360 retro now, but you gotta have some batteries um, for the various toys and such in your retro room. Uh, this is the Wii drawer. This has like additional Wii motes in it. Um, this is the 8-bit dose. I can play my GameCube controller on my Switch wirelessly, which is cool. Uh, a Pokemon and Luigi one back there. Uh, the next drawer, this is the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3 controllers. I wanted to put this foam in every single one of the drawers and then realized real quick, it's like $30 to $40 just for like one piece of foam like that. And I was like, okay, maybe we'll hold off on that. So I only did a PlayStation one. Uh, this is my loose PlayStation uh, games. So unfortunately, I don't have everything in a box one day, but this has a lot of my loose PlayStation games in it. Um, and then below is my 360. And like I said, I have a lot of 360 controllers. Uh, this also has my Elite uh, boxed, because I have another Elite controller that I have up top. Um, and then the uh, Xbox One controller there. Uh, over here to your right is my Xbox wall. Now, this is the last console that I am collecting special for. This is complete exclusive set for the original Xbox. Um, I was a PlayStation 2 kid, but my friends all loved Xbox. So one birthday, they forced me to have an Xbox, which was totally cool, gave it to me, and I fell in love with the console. We were playing Halo together. Um, we were playing Fusion Frenzy together. Uh, what else? Panzer Dragoon Orda. There were some really cool uh, games that came out on that console. Um, there's that one, Panzer Dragoon Orda. There was also um, Fatal Frame and Silent Hill. Those were both great games on there. Um, but what I, uh, what I ended up doing was going for an exclusive set because after I was thrifting, I kept finding Xbox games. And one day... I was like, oh my God, I never realized it, but I'm only like 20 to 30 titles away from a complete set. Now I got it down to 12. I only need 12 more games to have a complete exclusive set of the original Xbox. Up above it on the shelf is the special edition green Halo console. So cool. Um, uh, flanking to the right is the Modern Warfare Special Edition console, the original white console, which still plays, did not have a red ring of death. Then the slim versions. I'm not a fan of the latest slim version, which was like the version, it's like the Super Mini, I forget what it's called. Um, this was the first revision, and I love the look of those. I have a glossy, a matte, and the Halo Reach Special Edition. And then a couple controllers flanking that that I haven't opened yet that I've found either thrifting or that I've got as a gift. Uh, below this stuff, oh, look at this guy, little hiding here. Um, below this is my handheld and my controller section, but I've got my Neo Geo Pocket. Stumbled across this at like a St. Vincent de Paul. I walked in and said, hey, do you guys have any games you haven't put out yet? And the guy says, yeah, I'm actually playing something in the back during my lunch break that we haven't put out yet. And I'm like, oh, what is it? Thinking it was like a... I don't know, maybe like a Nintendo DS or something. And he walks out with this Neo Geo pocket. And I was like, can I buy it? And his manager was like, what are you doing? Put that on the floor right now. Yes, you can give it to him. So that was cool. Um, back here below, I've got my PSP and my PS Vita collection. Um, love both of those. Story time when I was a young lad. So this was like 10, maybe eight years ago. I sold off my PSP collection. I was like, oh, I don't play it very often immediately regretted it, started collecting for it again. So this is collection 2.0 on the PSP, snagging ones that I want. And then obviously the Vita, such an awesome console to collect for, getting harder and harder. I do know Collector's Luck um, has a full PlayStation Vita library. Check his stuff out, guys. If you wanna see cool finds every day, he's got some good stuff. 
Uh, my PSP is in here. I've got a gray, white, black variants, um, the PSP 1000 and 2000 versions. I love the 1000, by the way. The 1000 had like a hard chassis to it. Um, just feels like you can't break this thing. It's very, very sturdy. And then the newer one, which was the 2000 model, a little bit more uh, plastic oriented. I don't mind playing with it. They're both fine, but I definitely prefer the 1000 over it. Uh, in here, I've got my handheld collection. This is gonna be my uh, 2DS stuff, my 3DS stuff, and then all of the console variants for the DS lights, DS XLs, uh, PS, uh, or sorry, SP. This is such a great one. You saw this in the intro. This is my favorite one to play the Game Boy Advance games on. It's the 101 model and it's beautiful. And then on the very bottom, I have some additional Game Boys. Um, I'm trying to collect the Game Boy Pocket was my favorite uh, Game Boy. And story time again, when I went to Japan, when I was 18, I didn't speak uh, the language very well. And there was a guy sitting next to me um, and we shared this specific Game Boy Pocket and played Tetris back and forth the entire flight. So this always means a lot to me for my first trip to Japan. So I wanna collect all the Game Boy Pockets. And then I've got my original Game Boys here that need a little bit of love, um, having some LCD issues with them and some uh, Game Boys back there. My advanced collection and some additional games. And then my WaveBird controllers are back there. Uh, up top, I charge all of my controllers on the top of this desk. Um, the PlayStation 3 controller, like Energizer charger. Um, this was one of the most epic finds that I had. I went into a thrift store, like on an island, came in, saw this Game Boy. The Game Boy was for $12.99. I keep the price sticker on it because I was blown away. And inside of it was like a like fresh Game Boy and all of these freaking games. I was blown away. This was amazing. It had an original Game Boy, great. And then some of the best ones, Metroid, Dr. Mario, uh, Super Mario Land, um, Wario, so, very cool. So anyway, that was my, um, that was my Game Boy find. Literally might be the best find that I've ever picked up. I still think it's very cool. And then a Game Boy Pocket in there. And then somehow down the line, I found this like Xbox 360 stand, which holds controllers in the console. I don't know where to put it in the game room. So unfortunately it hides behind the couch for now. Over here at the wall, this is my Ninja Turtle shrine with a little bit of extra pop culture stuff thrown in, my Street Fighter and Batman stuff. But the artist, I was at Comic-Con and they had created these prints and the artist signed all of these. So all of these are from Shelby Robertson. If you guys like his work, go check him out. These are cool, very cool. Raph is my favorite guy. I need to get these framed, but I love this stuff. Um, some extra additional Turtles artwork. The arcade games, and then also like Ninja Turtles as mechs. I always thought that was a really cool piece. Behind the couch is my PlayStation Classic. So this would be like the greatest hits, uh, green label variants for the PlayStation 1. I'm not collecting them, but if I come across them, this is where they go. And then behind the couch, I've got um, some variants for Xbox as well as GameCube stuff that just doesn't have room. It's a little bit of backfill, but if I ever need to pull some stuff out I wanna play, I got it back there. And then I have all of my film equipment back behind the uh, the couch. So that's how I do all my YouTube videos. I got a ring light that my wife just got me. So thanks, babe. Uh, and then also like a great uh, Rafali, Rafali? I don't remember what it's called. It's a tripod and I love it. It's a fluid head tripod. Last but not least, guys, in the game room is, oh wait, I always forget about this. One second, guys, up above here <laughs> is my Amiibo collection. Uh, I was never going to collect for the Amiibo, but somehow I fell in love with the figurines like most people do. Um, I stopped collecting for it, but then just this last year, after I played uh, Link's Awakening for the first time, fell in love with the game, I had to get the Amiibo for it. Um, picked up the Peach, Mario, and Bowser ones just as a collection. The rest of them I would just find wherever I could, but for some reason I missed that, and just because it's so high, so high in the game room. Below, uh, around the center center console, I've got uh, my controller bin. So this is all the active systems that I'm playing. And then um, also inside these bins, I've got 
my joysticks, which I have more joysticks. For some reason, I don't have them in here right now. Um, all of my light guns so I can play uh, the Saturn stuff, PlayStation stuff, Xbox stuff is in there. By the way, apparently these people love, didn't realize it. These are the Nyko Perfect Shots. These are really cool. You throw the Wii controller in it and play all those light gun games I was talking about on the Wii. And then um, in the center is all of my additional controllers. So this is gonna have my like extra Wii nunchucks, um, uh, NES controllers are in here, some extension cables are in here. So I wanted to use this as one of the best pieces of the room. And then last but not least, directly behind you is my main gaming area. And this is my 65 inch Samsung curved LED television. I think it's great. Um, it's one of my favorites. I have it mounted so I can pull it out all the way or kind of uh, tilt it or twist it so it can kind of come past this main area that I have on it. Uh, below that, I have my PS4. I normally had my Pro here, unfortunately it died. So I'm just rocking the old school. It's funny to call it old school now, but the old school PS4. Um, I've got a switch so that I can uh, bring all of my RCAs back and forth on the channel. The reason I got this TV is it had a connection for uh, my uh, composite cables, which was very cool to be able to hook my consoles up directly to the TV. Next to it is my Luigi RC car. My daughter and I charged that up, had a good time with it the other day. He actually moves his body back and forth as you rotate the tires. Super cool. I love it. And it charges and it gives you like 20 minutes of fun. Uh, below this is all of my consoles that I have hooked up in the room now. My Super Nintendo starting on the right. Below that is my original Nintendo system. That's the one as a kid uh, that my dad had. Then below that is my modded Wii and Wii U. Again, the Wii U totally underrated. And then the complete collection uh, Nintendo 64 console that I got to play those games with. Below or next to that is the GameCube. I've got a black and a, a gray console down there with a WaveBird attachment to it. Love the GameCubes, man, they're awesome. I'm still on the lookout though for the Game Boy attachment. If I can find it, I actually have one, I just don't have the disc. If I can find one, I made it. Somehow another Nintendo ended up down there. I don't know why. <laughs> Above that, this is the special edition like Connect Fitness bundle, uh, white console. Um, for some reason it holds ridiculous amount of value, but I just think it's a really pretty console. Up above that, the original Xbox. Next to that is my PlayStation 2 Slim uh, Silver, the original PlayStation with the wireless controller from Docs. Those are cool, you can't find them anymore. Uh, my PS3, which I actually play PS1 games on via HDMI uh, if I wanna play them. And then the Nintendo Switch, but it's missing because the daughter and I right now are playing Unraveled, which is a cool two person. She's only three years old and you can have the character hold down, I think the L1 button, I think it's called L1, um, and climb up to spots that they can't get to. So it's really easy for a three year old to play with you. The original Sega Genesis, uh, no, sorry, Sega Genesis Model 2 up here, my Sega Saturn and it has the action replay in it so I can play the Japanese uh, ports that I was showing you earlier. The Dreamcast, love the Dreamcast. There are so many cool games that I missed out on. So being able to enjoy the Dreamcast. And then the wife got me a Retron 5 that lets you play uh, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega games, all via HDMI. So that was cool. That is the 2001 2001? <laughs> this is the 2021 Game Room Tour, guys, of Pac-Man Case. It's funny because it's not a huge space, but I feel like I've utilized it the best that I can on this wall. Some, uh, some fun stuff that I had from my childhood past. Like I said, not the biggest collection, but it is one of the collections that 90% of them I have gotten thrifting. So if you guys like my silly content and you like what I got going on, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. If you guys want more, um, aside from the YouTube channel, we've got a podcast called The Real Awkward Podcast where we talk about nerdy and pop culture stuff. Have a good time. Um, you can get that on Spotify or wherever you find your podcast. Just look up R-E-E-L 
Real Awkward Podcast. Thank you guys for joining me on this fabulous tour of Pac-Man Casey's Game Room. I will catch you on the next YouTube episode. Later, Gators.